right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching the Retro Chronicle, and we're doing gaming news. Today is March 3rd, 2019. I'm joined by my co-host. I'm Calabash. I'm Retconned. And I'm Master David. And today we've got a variety of topics to be talking about. But first, um, what have you been doing that's non-gaming related? Nothing. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Is there anything you want to talk about that's not gaming related? I mean, do we count our 40k game as gaming related? <laughs> if you want to talk about the 40k game, we can. I mean, my character after dying, you know, got a new one. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And Eric's character, new characters in play as well. Yep, two of our characters died last game, two of the other ones survived. And two people got drawn out by cryostasis chambers and revived and turned into our two new characters. Yep. It worked out pretty well. Yep. Some uh, good DMing there. I mean, I accidentally killed two people, so I don't know if it's really good. <laughs> oh, do you remember Eric's character's name? I, I don't remember um, anybody's name. I write it down because yep. I'm so forgetful. I write it down, too. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to remember. We're, we're next level. We're taking notes now. Yeah, I know. Got Look a little, little semi notebook gameplay. Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> we're professionals here. But uh, let's let's go ahead and just dive into our first article. Our first article is Pokemon Shield and Sword. Uh, Pokemon Shield and Sword was originally announced via Twitter back in October of 2018, but it isn't until now that we have something substantial to sink our teeth into. The new starting zone will be named Galar. Galar is my Galar. Name. And will be modeled after Britain. The three starting Pokemon were revealed. Brookey, a grass monkey. Scoro Bunny, a fire rabbit. And Sobble, a water lizard that's probably crying. I mean, so, uh, I just, I forgot to correct something in this. Um, it's not the starting zone. Like, the entire region is called Galar. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's like the Hoenn. The continent. Yeah, that jazz. Yes. Yeah, okay. that's the, the continent. Continent. Will be named Galar. All right. But, uh, yeah, uh, is there anything you want to talk about for Shield and Sword? I don't know anything about Pokemon besides the first generation. I mean, we don't really know too much about it yet. Evidently, random battles are back. Um, they're not going to be in the style of the Let's Go game. So, right, right. we're going to have... Good. It's going to be like a core Pokemon series. Gyms are back from uh, uh, Sun and Moon because they had... Uh, what, what did they have in Sun and Moon? It was some weird challenge, but... Oh man, those were not very good. Anyways, but that's really all I know outside of, you know, the, the starters, which you can probably find images of. They have a full 3D render in the Pokemon Direct video, so you can check it out there. Yep, they've got a um, nice little introduction in the Nintendo Direct, I guess. Um, nice couple minute video showing and introducing those um, on their YouTube channel. But, um... From a technical aspect, I just basically talked about how um, I'm waiting for, like, 1080p Christmas. Like, I'm waiting to see something that's just like, yeah, like, that's the Pokemon that I want to play. We're not there yet, but Pokemon's really not aimed at me. Um, but that's what's going to bring me to Pokemon, is um, a weird bit of realism. <laughs> well, I mean, they're slowly getting there. They Two are. Two games ago, we were on a, still on a handheld. Yeah, we're getting well, to it. Different type of handheld yeah, for a Game yeah. Boy. We're upgrading. Everything's slowly looking better. We're getting into 3D models, and, you know, um, 10 years ago we were on sprites, so... You know, outside of, you know, those Pokemon Stadium games, if you want to count them. Oh, for real. Dude, I those games were amazing, about though. Stadium. Ah, uh, Stadium. Those were... Those are some that's of my something, favorites. Back that's something that I could question why they haven't tried to do a re-release. Yeah. It's just, hey, do another Stadium game. Fighting games are really in right now. Brawls, all the, all the rage. Yeah, Why but not I mean, make that, a Pokemon Stadium game. That's true. I don't know. They had a lot of side games and stuff into it. They did make an actual fighting Pokemon game, but that is like way too far away. I like. Ah, I've never even played it. Why would mm -hmm. I play a Pokemon fighting game? I didn't even game? know that was a thing. Yeah, it's like Pokemon Tournament. Yeah. What? <laughs> Oh, well, good. it's it's unheard of, so it's probably not good. Uh, Pokemon tournament. Looking it up on the old. I was gonna say Google, but we're on DuckDuckGo. Yep. Wow, this is 
2018. Hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about games that apparently exist. We just don't realize what they're called. Yeah, I'm, I'm old. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gengar looks pretty dope. Yeah, but it's, it's literally a Pokemon fighting game. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's... I don't know. I might be into that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like, that might get me back into Pokemon. Is that a Switch, or what is that? Uh, I think it's a Wii U. A Wii U? Oh, I ain't got no fucking Wii U. I ain't buying a Wii U for it, but... There's the problem with Nintendo. It came out in 2015. Give me a, give me oh, a oh, PC. Oh, okay, no, it did come out on Switch. Oh. Uh... Might be my in some like, <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> That's interesting. Look at that. Yeah. Unexpected turn. Unexpected turn of events. Uh be so, a lot yeah. better. I'd be so much better at it than Brawl. Like I just Brawl's not really a fighting game. It's like a platform. What? I guess that's Brawl. my biggest break. Yeah. Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers, yeah. Oh. Dude, I just play D V D inside B and I just try to annoy people. I'm bad at that game. Yeah. I just, I want to play, like, actual fighting. I think that's what it is. Just not a fan of having to deal with the level trying to kill me. And me trying to kill myself with my own stupidity. Extra edge. <laughs> but uh, Sword and Shield is going to be out in late 2019. Probably sometime in November. Yeah, I mean, the last... Four or five games have come out in November. Right before oh, so Christmas. This, is, this yeah. is speculation, but that's a that's, solid That's bet. speculation. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could it be October, right. because before the string of uh, November releases, they did a lot of October releases. So. I, I can understand before Christmas time, yeah. because we know exactly what's happening. Right. Everybody wants to get their kids gifts. Yep. And dude, that's, I mean, everybody sells more at Christmas time. It's yep. a fact. Yep. Everybody saves up money for Christmas. Right. I think a big part of it. Um, diving into our next article, Techland closes their Polish publishing office. I feel like I just had an aneurysm there. Um, See that three times fast? Yeah. Techland closes Polish publishing office. Um, Techland is known for publishing a variety of games, but most recently is noteworthy because of the Dying Light franchise. Unfortunately, due to the lack of physical copies being sold, the company has decided to close their game publishing office in Poland. Thankfully, their current ongoing projects are unaffected by this restructuring. So again, this is strictly for only physical publications. I'm not really surprised that like physical, digital, like, inbox PC games are down. Yeah, yeah like I'm I mean, not. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Is Dying Light popular? Um, it's a fairly popular franchise. It's the only thing that I recognize off the list of their lineage of games, so... And see, and I mean, I'm not surprised the current ongoing projects are... Yeah. Like, do they have any? Um, their uh, Poland office was strictly, um, I don't want to say it's strictly there, but it was there for the primary concern of doing physical publishing actually inside of Poland. Okay. A lot of times they have to create a studio or a place of origin inside the country because the country will mandate that it has to have Made in Poland or some other uh, stamp of approval there. Recently, Apple has had to do it inside of India. It's another reason that Apple um, hasn't been popular in India is India has rules about um, technology companies coming in. If you want to do it, it has to be like 15 to 20 percent parts made um, or resources in India. You have to have some sort of manufacturing or place of assembly in India. So that was basically their way of going through the publishing for Poland um, because physical, pop, uh, physical um, copies are on all-time down low. They've closed the office. Um, it's kind of a ridiculous comparison, but I just basically compare it to the difference between Activision and them Activision, of course, did massive layoffs, where they lay off, like, 400-plus employees. Um, and here, Techland's only laying off, like, 14. Um, or no, um, Activision laid off 800 people. Techland has 400 employees, and they're only laying off 14 of them. Mm -hmm. So just in comparison to numbers, you know, astronomical difference. But the main important part was the CEO of Techland kind of cut from a different cloth, made a nice little public statement and said that 
uh, quote unquote, I have personally made sure to take care of affairs and future careers of the members of our Polish distribution department who will be leaving Techland. Severance packages they will receive are both above the industry and the Polish employment legislation standards. I would like to thank the whole team for the many years of great work together. Um, you know, it's a nice little endearing message. If you think about, he went out of his way to say that for 14 employees, considering the size of his company, it shows that he at least cares and he's, you know, call it PR or not, he's going out of his way to say something. Um, so shout out to Howell Marchakawa, which I've butchered your name, and Satori Awada, who is, their CEOs who care. Uh, Satori Awada is famously quoted after the recent Activision layoffs because he said, if we were to reduce the number of employees for better short-term financial results, employee morale will decrease. I sincerely doubt employees who fear they may be laid off will be able to develop software titles that could impress people around the world. So he's basically... He said that quote way before, but you can see how it can be used to take a jab at companies like Activision who are trying to, I don't want to say cook books, but offset some numbers, fire a bunch of people, and make their goals all of a sudden more achievable because they have 10% less people. And he's the same CEO who uh, famously reduced his salary by 50% when the Wii U didn't I know, sell. I know it's Nintendo. I don't know if it's the same guy. But I'll fact my check myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm Nintendo famously has great CEOs who actually care. <laughs> uh, well, unprecedented in the United States of America. And it comes... Yeah, it was Yes, him. it was him. All yeah. right. Yeah, there you go. He's just an all-around stand-up guy. Well, I mean, he's... What happens when you're a respectable person? Yeah. You do the right um, thing. And I've, I've never heard of someone in the United States taking a salary cut as a CEO. Oh, well, I mean... But maybe they just don't get the publicity for it. That's true. Because, I mean, I'm sure it happens, but at the same time... I, I question, right? Like, I really do. I really wonder if someone who's made it to the CEO position in America has ever just said, you know what? I'm sure someone said, I don't need the pay. Right? But I wonder if anybody's literally said, you know what, I messed up. I will half my salary because I messed up. That just seems like something from a foregone culture. And no. they're doing it because they're so honorable. Well, we're not. <laughs> yeah, but also at the same time, I'm pretty sure that's in America. People say that all the time, but it's when they're going to get fired. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure their job was definitely pointed at and being like, hey, you're the cause for it. You would uh, normally step down or get fired at that point in time. Yeah. But um, uh, basically you can look no further than Anthem to see that cause and effect work out in real time. Um, our next article is, of course, That's about nice. the issues. But uh, Diablo developer Travis Day made a detailed... Um, issued post on Reddit that basically was wonderfully articulated. Um, I'm going to do it a huge disservice by talking about it here. Um, you should, of course, go read his actual post. It's, it's, it's a great post. It explains everything um, that he dislikes about the game and what he thinks they can do in order to improve it. Um, among those specific instances, he listed useless statistics, lack of risk versus reward, and no incentives and in game as reasons why the Anthem game was struggling. Um, I haven't played Anthem itself. Um, I had a key for it and I tried to reactivate an Origin account, do all this stuff for it, and it just never came to pass because of issues, technical problems, and. Uh, servers being busy, so I can't really speak on behalf of a person playing, but I've seen people play it, and I've watched a streamer who got paid to do it, so he couldn't say neg thing, negative things about it until after he was done streaming it, and that was super funny, mm -hmm. to just watch someone who's like, they signed away that paycheck, and they're like, I have to do this for eight hours. 
Yep. I'm two hours in. Well, I mean, I hate my life. And you just like see them like look at the camera like, I'm gonna do this for six more hours. <laughs> like, yep. Like they paid me. And like, I'm gonna get that paycheck. <laughs> yep. It's all about that check. <laughs> um, but his post basically described all the issues. And um, like I said, it was very well articulated. But the things that he talk about, talks about, it just makes you wonder really what happened with that game because they're not unique ideas to Anthem. They're basic core concepts of an FPS, quote unquote, looter shooter, where you want statistics and loot that isn't garbage. Meaning that when you acquire new items, you want it to feel good and feel like it matters. You want it to be upgrades. He's literally talking about instances in which, like, you got a random stat, and just it was not applicable to the weapon. Like, plus elemental damage, but it's not doing elemental You just artificially are um, straining out the game, making them trying to find another weapon, trying to reroll a stat at that point, just because just because you need extra time, artificially inflated. Um, and that's really frustrating. And, you know, he talks about the lack of a carrot on a stick, basically. Um, players don't have a reason to keep playing. They're not rewarded for more time being invested. If a uh, difficult dungeon takes 30 minutes, and a difficult dungeon takes 40 minutes or an hour, and another one takes an hour and a half, it's all the same loot. It's all the same level ups. There's no gear difference. I haven't been rewarded for completing something. Um, it took me a vast more amount of time in order to gather resources or to conquer. Um, granted, there are difficulty jumps in which you'll get better loot, but just within the actual main story itself, of whether you want to call it power creep, progression, carried on the stick, it's just it's not carrying you along the game where the game developers clearly want you to do something and you're wanting to do something else because um, you want to do something that's fun and the game developers like well i need you to explore everything i need you to fulfill you know goals one through 100 before i can let you go on this main story quest they're just thin in the content yeah yeah that's it's honestly just lazy. Well, it's not lazy. It's just they didn't do their research right, and I'm sure a lot of this is getting pushed onto them from their publisher. Yeah, um, I feel like they did try to make something that was, uh, you know, similar to Destiny, similar to that sort of sci-fi type franchise. Um, and I also just feel like it's incomplete. Like, I, I honestly just feel like they didn't want to put this game out. Honestly, sounds a lot like the first Destiny. Um, it seems like EA, you know, as a publisher, it was like, we don't want to give you any more time. We've made the hard, arbitrary dates. Put your game out. And um, they've made a reply to this post, um, you know, Bioware developers. And they said, you know, we've take, taken in your feedback. Appreciate it. Um, well, you know, they're obviously have the intention of discussing it and trying to fix all the problems with it, but you gotta wonder how much time it is between the game that's fixed that they want to showcase and right now. Because, you know, there's games that get patches for a year and a half, and then it becomes a playable game. And it's like, is your fan base going to stick around for a year and a half? Right. Probably not. <laughs> it's probably just going to dive off and, you know, the next latest game... Uh, some of them being free, like Apex Legends, uh, is just going to yank them away to something else. So, is uh, Apex Legends on console, or is it just PC? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because I feel like that's a big indicator on a, on a game's survivability. Um, it's, it's, I question it being free on console, but I guess I haven't had a console in so long. I assume you just download it like a demo like anybody else. But, um, probably, probably some of the Fortnite. Yeah. Because I wonder how you get Fortnite on the console. You just download it. And it's just an app in the store. I think so. 
See, I'm not sure. I've never done it. And that's it, it, it released for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 at the same time. Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's nifty. See. And console crossplay plan for future. But yeah, um, there's tons of other games, basically, that are out, that are working, that people want to play. They're going to play that, whether than waiting around who knows how long in order for you to fix your current game. So that's why it's super important for you to hit that, um, that brilliant publication and instant opening where it's just a huge amount of success within the first couple of weeks, within the first month. It almost determines your longevity period. A lot of the games that have like 90,000 people that are currently playing, they've had 90,000 people currently playing for, for a, a very long yeah. time. It's things like Counter-Strike. It's things like Dota. And it's just like, you know, they've peaked at 150k in their steady years later at 90. Um, there's, there's an infograph on Reddit that showed, like, the past, yeah. like, I think it was five years or something like that. Of, yeah, and that's more or less what I was referring to. Yeah. There's so few games that then peak. Um, the games that have come out and have extra DLC or extra stuff added... It's so rare for them to pick up and all of a sudden gain huge popularity when their initial release date was a year ago. Yeah. Um, there are, you know, bumps, but it's nothing compared to the when something, time. yeah, when something's an initial outrageous initial success. Release. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of like with movies, you know, if you think about it, like they do all of their movie, like with their money within like the first couple of weeks. Um, anything past that, it's just diminishing returns for it being at the um, movie theater. That's why they pull it. That's why movies aren't just available 24-7. <laughs> but yeah, um, I hope Anthem worked out its issues. The post that Travis Day wrote was brilliant. Check it out on Reddit. But um, they really have a very small window to fix that game. They're hoping to just be continuously successful. And a lot of people have even reached out over Twitter. And you can tell that they're basically fearful that EA is going to give them the axe. You know, No Man's Sky actually had a comeback. Because of that is a good example. Um, although, um, I'm one of those people... I still haven't played it. Yeah, I'm one, of those, <laughs> I'm one of those people that I'm like, I heard so much bad stuff. Well, um, I don't I want Nathan, to support that behavior. Yeah, I know Nathan's played it. So yeah, yeah, he got back. That would be a good... Turn me on. Yeah, that'd be a good discussion of, like, basically whether they fulfilled half of their promises or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You know, sometimes developers don't properly guess how quickly the player base will get through their content. I wonder how much that's changed, though, now. Like, I wonder if they're... Well, that's the reason why they're doing dumb shit like this. Yeah. Well, I wonder if the reviews finally balanced out, or is it just all hate still in No Man's Sky? Um... Because, like I said, that can stain you. There could be oh, so yeah. many people that review bomb you in the beginning that even a year later, you're doing successful. That score, whether it's on Metacritic or Steam, just never bumps back up because of the law. Well, of did they also add the uh, how the game has been reviewed in like the last few months? Yeah, they do. So, yeah, you can I, I skirt a time period for sure. You can see whether it's like 10,000 reviews have been positive in you know, that month span. But, um, also, how many people do that? We obviously do it, so we know it's there. Well, yeah, and I mean... But yeah, it's a, it's a hard life for the developer, so best of luck fixing Anthem. Moving on to our next article, we can talk about Oculus, who showcase the Quest. Um, the Quest is the latest headset for VR developed by Oculus. The new selling point for this VR headset will be that you don't actually need a computer attached to it in order to operate it. So you don't need any more um, VR-ready rigs. I've seen that stamped on so many computers, it's ridiculous. They just stamp it on, VR-ready. I'm like, does it have a graphics card that supports VR? Hell no. But you could buy one, and then it would be VR-ready. I'm just like, why do you have a VR-ready sticker on it? Right. Well, it... With this rig, you could modify it for VR. Well, with that's anybody's not, rig, yeah, you could modify it for VR. I feel 
feel like that's basically false. It's advice. disingenuous. Yeah, it's very disingenuous. It's like I'm she sure you could. Practices. I'm sure you could get it to work. It would just be really bad. And they're like, "Well, it doesn't matter. It works." So VR ready. <laughs> that's like me saying mine's VR ready. Yeah. You changed everything about it. It's VR ready. Have you? Uh, tried to do the Steam test. Uh, oh, Steam God. has a free VR test. I actually know that my computer barely qualifies it. It goes into the yellow, and it basically tells me, hey, you have a good enough graphics card for it, but your bottleneck is totally your processor because it's so fucking, like, 10 plus years old. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no shit. Like, Thanks, it's like, so you it's like, it's like hey, computer. though, if you rebuild that computer and change out that processor, <laughs> you've got a VR-ready rig. And I'm like, great, yeah, there's another Thanks. $500. I feel like that's probably what Bud would do because my processor's pretty old. And you should you should check it out. It'll let you know. You'd be surprised. Um, there's even people that will tell you, like, based off of, I don't know if it still does number percentages, but there used to be people who had scores and will say, like, Hey, at nine hundred and five, you know, whatever, nine thousand five hundred and fifty, I was able to play these games, but these games were fucking untouchable. Yeah. I also should give more RAM. Yes, RAM is a godsend. Um, RAM. RAM fixes so many problems. And you guys love opening tabs, so get some more RAM, run twelve thousand tabs you want. <laughs> It'll be great. Probably should. But um, the Quest will debut at $400, which is twice the price of the Oculus's previous model called the Go. But it's also the exact same price of the current model Oculus called the Rift. So what's the deal? Well, the Quest is going to have reduced textures, graphics. Oh boy. Oh boy. And performance, because it's banking everything on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor. Which is like a mobile processor? That is correct. And honestly, they're not going to put like an actual processor in it, because it would require like a standard ATX board, and then you'd have this giant thing attached to your face that would be comical. It would be pretty hilarious. Yes. um, the only way to rem- remedy that is custom sockets, and most people just won't invest money into that. But um, the maximum battery life is about two hours. Um, I think they said maximum three, but wow. I'm going to call them on their bullshit and say it's two. I bet, it's, I bet they're just trying to peak at that three-hour mark where they're like, well, it's 2.45, and on Sundays it's 2.55, so it's really three. Call horseshit on that. Um, but essentially, they just made a worse headset. And so, in order to understand why Oculus went out of their way to make a worse headset, here's a little bit of history. Um, John Carmack left id Software. id Software is the creators of video games like Doom. And he left in order to pursue his interest in VR. He'd actually spent years of developing the VR technology for id Software, but id Software decided they weren't interested. So John went to Facebook and sold them the idea. And a terrible lawsuit ensued because of it. Years later, here we are. John had left id Software during the lawsuit, as you do, um, and he helped found Oculus. But now, um, he's left Oculus and he's interested in creating his own company. Well, why did, why did John leave? Um, well, it's because Zuckerberg, head of Facebook, isn't interested in developing high quality virtual reality headsets. He's interested in creating cheap ones, uh, probably to mine your data. Meanwhile, the actual article that we should be discussing is by The Verge. And it is devoted to talking about how the Zuck is going to enforce some harsh quality control measures over the apps that are going to be sold for the Quest. Um, the new VR headset. But what are they going to have to do? Well, developers are going to have to submit concept documents in order to prove, quote-unquote, quality and probable... Provable? Probable? Probable. Probable. Like market success. Quality. Meaning that, you know, it's a really quali- quality game and they're going to make money off of it. But uh, we know this is obviously untrue because we know that the bulk of their stuff 
It's just going to be ports from their other VR headset, the Rift, because the Rift technically has higher resolutions, but will have a slightly older processor. <clears throat> it's still actually going to be downgrades from the Rift, meaning that you are going to be run something worse than what the game ever intended. The game intends you to have a completely different hardware set, but they're going to make it freaking work on the Quest. That's not quality control. If it was quality control, you would make it so that all games had to be created for the Quest. No half ass ports, no nothing. So we know this article is basically just PR bullshit brought to you by Facebook. It wants to claim that all of the new VR you know, apps they have going forward will be heavily, heavily modified, regulated, and you know, have a huge sense of quality control. When in fact it's just it's garbage, and they're just trying to get you to purchase the headset at the cheapest, lowest possible rate, so that way can get your personal data. But I wish John Carmack the best in his next business venture. Maybe in a couple of years, we'll see some awesome 4K 60 FPS headsets, which is what John Carmack wants. That's what I want. I want a fucking holodeck, man. Like, give this man money. Why would you go and create a worst headset? It, it speaks for itself. Like, he's not interested in creating high-quality gaming headsets. He's interested in something completely different. Well, I mean, he's trying to get in on the market. He's because Yeah, he is. And he will be successful definitely overseas. Um, I definitely think about, like, India and the Asian-oriented marketplace. Yeah, this seems like the Game Boy of uh, VR headsets. Yeah, that's not a bad way of thinking about it. Um, when you think $400 at the price point... And before you had to have like a twelve hundred dollar gaming rig, and then had to buy something that was four hundred dollars on top of that, you have dramatically reduced the barrier of entry. You could also say the same thing for the PS4 with the PSVR. Um, but again, he's removed the need for a console because this is just going to be the jankiest thing around. And he's giving you that VR. Um, I would honestly argue, though. That if like that's what he was interested in, you could just look at Google Cardboard, and Google Cardboard was them just sending you like an origami cutout yeah. where you could just put your cell phone and like, oh look, it's VR, and that is the bare minimum entry, right? Yeah. Like it seems dumb, but you have all the gyroscope sensors in there, you have a 1080p display, you have all of the things that you want. So it's, it's not that far off from a joke. Like, I, I almost envision in the future, if you're not going to a dedicated place where there is VR, where you just pay money to go into their room that gives you a headset, or in my miraculous future, it's a holodeck. On holodecks. So. Like the Void type thing. Like the Void. Yeah, uh, it's like actual VR. There's a Star Wars thing that they did. Um, and they like fan you with heat and stuff and you're like in these suits walking around on like through these tracks like in this Is it like an amusement park kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Well I mean it's not in an amusement park, but it I mean Yeah, yeah, it's I that kind of Yeah, it's a fully um reactive experience. Yeah. Um And you know, they've they've had stuff like that where it enhances your sensory input for a long time. I can remember going to like Disney World and watching Honey I Shrunk the Kids, and there being like um, special oh, honey, theaters. Honey I Shrunk the Audience. It might have been that. Uh, if it was at Disney, I don't know. Uh, I just remember like it was an interactive theater where like um, the seats were specially designed to like vibrate and rumble and like shoot air at specific places. So you'd think like at one point in time like mice were running around or you were being frozen or all this other stuff like. And that's what you're looking for in your virtual reality yeah. experience is just Immersive. you tricking the brain just one more one more way. It reminds me of those people who built that multi-directional like rolling pad. Like oh, it, yeah. it's stationary. 360. Yeah, yeah. And, but it, it like it's on like bearings and such and turns. Yep. Yeah. And then playing Battlefield on that and I was like I would get so tired so fast. Yeah. And but I mean um 
think about the application there, like it's so realistic. Um, and I almost question if military just doesn't use that, right? Because you're having to right. put all the gear on them, use the same amount of physical force. Nah, the military doesn't want to spend the money on this. They'll wait till it gets smaller and cheaper. Well, what I'm saying is, like, they want the person to have to run the same distance they normally oh, yeah. do. They want the person to be physically weighed down. They love battle simulation training. Battle simulation training is so much cheaper than the real thing. Yeah, I know, but the thing is, is uh, they're going to wait for to do stuff like, like that until it's cheaper, if it's even more viable than just doing it. Yeah. Um, you know. There was, like, an article that came out talking about how they had designed specialty controls for training people to uh, pilot subs, and yeah. they just gave up and were like, use the Xbox 360 controllers. Mm -hmm. And people were like, well, that's kind of uncomfortable. Um, now you're like, literally, like you've breached the idea between like, this is realism in a game. You've now handed the person like a game controller. Didn't the military have an FPS that they developed and put out? Yes. Um, in fact, I want to say they have more than one. And I've oh, played man. one. And it was awesome. Um, I don't remember what <laughs> it, it was. Awesome. I don't remember what it was called, but it was very much like the um, battlefield, or I want to say I love Black Hawk Down. That's like my go-to PlayStation Two game, where it's That's just so no, like Black Hawk Down is like an awesome memory where uh, you had people like doctors that could r run around with um, syringes of adrenaline. So when someone's, like, about to die, you have, like, ten seconds to run over there and jump and stab them with an adrenaline shot, and they just get right back up. Oh, good. So you'd have, like, funny scenes where someone stands up, and you know they're going to get shot at, and the medic's laying prone with two syringes, <laughs> and you're just watching them take bullets, and you're like, syringe, <laughs> syringe. <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. Uh, good times, good times. That's amazing. America's Army? That sounds right. It's good graphics, too. They evidently made, like, yeah. five of these games. Or oh, they're, wow. Well, way more than five. But, uh... I want to say it was free. Um, That's hilarious. Either that or they had, like, online test servers at some point of their playtesting experience. Because I definitely remember joining into it and being like, yeah, like, this is weird. Because you got to question whether you're playing now against some dude who's actually training for the military or not. Well, And I it's mean, like, you're impacting their training experience by doing, like, weird, ridiculous things. Like, okay, is, like, a bad guy really going to, like, jump off from the second floor, break his leg, and throw a grenade at you? Probably not, but I really want to get this win. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that's, like, when it's from the military oh, perspective, dude. that's all recorded, tallied, you know, yeah. all of that gets into some giant military think tank, you know? Um, it's weird when you think about your data being used that way, in my opinion. At you least. know what's funny? Mm -hmm. Battlefield's, like, kind of an interesting thing. Oh, well, it's just rock, paper, scissors, though. Mm -hmm. Is like the shifting meta of each match. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I bet that's the statistics they're monitoring if there's anything like that. I mean, they love their war games. Um, whether it's chess, or whether it's Go, or whether it's, you know, people literally playing Battlefield or Call of Duty. They oh. just, they keep that stuff up. Yep, I love Battlefield and I? Although I haven't played the new one, because I don't care to. I've just been so torn off from FPS shooters since my Rust experience. Rust, well, you've tarnished me. Yeah, Rust is a bad game. It is, I agree. That's why when Max was like, bro, come play Rust again, I'm like, no, I'm good. I played it those three times. I don't ever want to play it uh, again. I think just public servers are just... We've become a society that's just the worst thing <laughs> ever. Because there are games that you, like, you go into and you're like, this is a wonderful community. Like Everybody's nice. Everybody's trying to help me. But then you get into something that it's, like, popular. <laughs> and then it's toxic. It's like, oh, goodness, because this guy just told my mother to go F herself. It's literally it's, the apocalypse, dude. Yeah. You've created a cesspool of ignorance, and just they all hate on each other. Be funny. It'll be studied for years. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to our next <laughs> article. Mario Kart 
in your Mercedes. That's right. Um, well, no, it's not actual Mario Kart, but it sounds like a way more impressive title. Yeah, and it's it not in your Mercedes. It's yeah. in their Mercedes well, for now. Yeah. But, Let's see if they actually make that an option. But I got you. I, I got you with the clickbait title, didn't I? So now you're sucked in. Well, I mean, it's kind of what they say if you Google that. Yeah. If so play, play Mario game. Kart in your Mercedes. Google it. You're either going to pop up with us or that shitty article. I mean, yeah. Probably that shitty article. Yeah. Well, probably. I mean, we'll, we'll see how good my this. SEO um, skills are. The article's not bad. Yeah, um, the it's short, but I mean it's okay. The Daimler Research Group has partnered with Mercedes in order Daimler. to Daimler. Daimler, okay. Yeah. The Daimler Research Group has partnered with Mercedes in order to bring you the capability to play a Mario Kart esque game in your Mercedes Benz esque mm-hmm. car. Um, it works <laughs> just the way you think it does. You steer, you use the gas pedal, and it allows you to control your character through the navigational pane. They've even synchronized lighting to match in-game audio to give you a more colorful finish. Yeah, and the article was talking about how uh, whenever you were hit by attacks, the seatbelt would tighten up. Yep. Oh, And the AC would nice. blow on, on you and your more like for the oh. closer moments in the game. Oh. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but the seatbelt function wasn't working, I think, in the article is what it said. No, he said it was working for the first half of the race, and the uh, second half it stopped working. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that'd be a funny way to wear out your seatbelt in Mario Kart and just wear out the tension. But um, I like this article because it... Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I was just going to say, I like this article because it brings all sorts of questions to the table about technology. Um, you've got like a bunch of cars with the head mounted displays in the back for the back uh, passenger seats um, and I just want to know like are they going to like embed some video games back there if that's all tied into the navigation panel it's probably not cost effective honestly oh, though. Um, otherwise they would have done it before I don't know um, people are always looking for new ways of gaining money and revenue I remember when I go to when you go to like some terrible restaurant like Chili's or Applebee's and they have those <laughs> self swiping card uh, things. Oh yeah. There's video games built in there to like entertain your shitty children for like ninety nine cents. Yeah. And like you have to swipe your card in order to keep entertaining that kid for X amount of time. Yeah. And I think about stuff like that for parents and I'm I don't have kids, so I'm never gonna know. Uh, God forbid. Um but Stuff like that could be used. And then you think about rental cars and stuff like that. Like, the idea that um, some of the self-driving new cars already have um, 1080 Ti's in them. And they have two of them. Um, if your car's turned off and it's not being used for self-driving, you could be using that power in order to entertain kids with video games. And all that stuff is already built into a navigational panel your computer's already got a processor. It's got two dedicated graphics cards. I mean, we're really just thinking about um, a, a different way of customizing the experience in the car. Um, it's crazy because, you know, you're talking about giving people the ability to play video games in the car, but as long as they're not driving, I guess that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. Well, I just feel like that maybe in the future, but. Currently, that's what aftermarket work is. You know, like like you had mentioned before, uh, like pet my ride. Yep, pet my ride. I, I that's love why the shops idea. like that exist, though, so they yeah. can do shit like that. I love the idea. Just throw in the PlayStation in the back. Add a couple LCDs. We'll put in a boombox, some shag carpet, paint your red. I mean, do it's, it's gonna look work. like a million bucks, man. What cracked me up was. Um, the ones whose cars were like so bad that they it was just more cost effective to buy them new cars than pimp those. Right, they're just like, well, that's a rust bucket. We'll just spend two G's and get a different rust bucket. Yeah, like, uh, we were gonna give them a bunch of tech, you know, but we could just give them a different car. Uh, doing doing the Lord's work there. Yeah, way to go, exhibit. Uh, I wonder if he still gets stopped and asked about. Probably. I mean, there's uh, that meme. I don't see it as much. Oh, anymore, the Yo Dog meme. I wonder if you could bring it back. I wonder if that's something you could do practical, real time about someone's ride, but doomed to like Teslas and shit like that. 
See, I don't know because I, I, I'm sorry you validate you invalidated the terms of service I in know, your Tesla. <laughs> I know that's what I'm thinking. I'm like that might uh, be a thing. Um, I've I, I listen to a podcast actually, and the guy talks about um, oh god, what if people start overclocking their parts in their Teslas? Right? They Does talk that even about do anything though. Well, they talk about there's like OnStar and other stuff that's like built in that's supposed to be for safety features. And I don't remember if it's a Tesla, but he has some super nice car. Um, and he specifically talked about, he, he knows that it's used for tracking. So he disabled all of it. And so when he goes and takes it to the shop and they go and plug in the car um, and it reads the computer chip, the first thing it does is it shits out all these errors and says, oh God, I can't communicate to all of these things. Yeah. That he has disabled, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you need to fix all of these." And he's just like, "No, no, I don't. Like, I know what every single one of those is used for." And he's like, "One, I'm not paying for their service. So, two, they shouldn't be sending and receiving any data from my car. And three, most of this stuff is just like abhorrent if you actually read into what they're using it for. And most likely, they're just trying to sell it as." Or points of advertisement you know we know this person's listened to all of these types of songs isn't it weird that on stars taking that information yeah like oh well they've got to make their money somehow well i pay them for a monthly fee weird huh yeah <laughs> but yeah um that's what you're gonna have to deal with with new smart cars you're gonna have just as much problems with computers as you will with cars because they're gonna build, they're gonna have stuff built in. Windows 10 is a beast that I can't tame. I work on computers for a living. I can't get it to not update when I don't want it to update. <laughs> that is the most infuriating fucking thing ever. I'm the administrator. I show you my credentials. I tell you not to update. It says that sounds right. I'm gonna update, and I'm like, it just there's programming involved that I'm just not allowed to access. And that's exactly what it's going to be like on those cars. Is there's going to be people that have alternative ideas and want to sell all kinds of data, and all I want to do is play video games in my car. So maybe we can come to an impasse. They can know what video games you're playing in your car. Yeah, you, you can get your video games. You can put Red Shell in my car. That's that's our impasse. Is you can figure out what games people are playing with Red Shell in my car, but not on my computer. Like, yeah, you don't want to know what I'm playing on my computer, anyways. Red Shell, GTFO. <laughs> but um, uh, briefly, we can basically talk about um, there's laws in place that prohibit people from having laptops per se, like in the front seat viewable in the car. Um, there's a really funny video of a police officer pulling over a person uh, who's in a Tesla. And the Tesla user is like recording the whole thing. And the officer is just like, you're not allowed to have a computer like that in your car. And he's like, that's, that's my dashboard. It's like embedded into the dash. It controls everything. It has my miles per hour. Like it has my AC. It has everything. <laughs> and this is my car. Yeah, that officer's never seen one before. So he's sitting there scratching his head. Then he goes back to his car which has a fucking laptop, which, you know, he goes and scoots over and types in some stuff. Because cops, cool. cops get a special law that allows them to use computers, but they don't want anybody else using it. Same thing goes with cell phones. And that's existed since, like, the 80s. I can remember seeing photos online in the early 90s of people being pulled over, and they had mobile workstations, and they had, like, fax machines and all this other shit in their car, and it was because... Whatever they were doing, it was some shady shit, and they needed all of that stuff, and they weren't going to go to the office in order to go do it. Um, and that definitely exists now. Um, you don't need, like, a van. You can just have a fucking cell phone. But um, that is a great video, because it just shows, like, the amount of ignorance and the fact that technological laws like, have not caught up yeah. with what is, like, real and practical right now. Um... I mean, yeah, look at the 
congressional hearings that, for Facebook. Like, oh, it's, just, yeah. not... it's a bunch of old people that don't know what anything means. I mean, they asked Zuck, how does Facebook make money? And that's, that's just like the softball question of the century. And them not understanding how he makes money is yeah. just like, why are you even fucking here? You clearly didn't. Oh, did you get red? Yeah, I got red. Oh. Does it say your GPU? Yep. My it's... CPU. My CPU's fine, my OS is fine, but the GPU, What's AMD, your... Radeon R7 <clears throat> 200 series. Yeah. What graphics card do you have? The 1050. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder my, what the difference will be. Mine will be my GPU, or not my GPU, my CPU. My processor's old. Oh. You can also try upgrading your graphics card drivers, closing performance heavy applications, and running this test again, but that probably won't make yeah, a I don't think it won't. difference. So, unfortunately, you are not VR ready. But again, I'm you VR are capable. You're VR yeah. capable Honestly, if you just upgrade your graphics, graphics card, card, which is all you really need to do. Throw, throw another. Tried it a couple of times. Well, it's because the one I had didn't fit. Yeah. But it was only like a side grade, really. Like a full upgrade. Was it too big? Yeah. It's fine. I have an enormous case. My case literally had components for me to take out in case I had a bigger graphics card. And I was like, wow. <laughs> that's a that's a that's great awesome. case. Case thought ahead and was like, yeah, we'll just we'll just let you remove all of these racks that you would normally store, like extra hard drives or stuff like that, and in case you just wanted to add like a twenty one inch graphics a card, monster of a <laughs> graphics card. Uh, and I did, and it didn't work, and it was terrible, and I'll never do it again. Anyways. <laughs> Moving on to Xbox One games on Windows 10. Um, I hate this idea. Speaking of needing a good graphics card. Yeah, speaking of needing a good graphics card. Um, no one asked for it, and no one wants it, but Microsoft is really struggling to bring PC gamers to their store, and everyone hates the Microsoft Store on Windows. So they've announced the idea that they're going to bring Xbox One games to the PC. And let me tell you why that's a dumb idea. No one wants a game that's upscaled to PC. In fact, that's one of the biggest gripes in the gaming industry is when you get a failed PC port. When a game is built for a PC, it's noticeable, there's high quality textures, frame rate is uncapped, you have bindable keys, there's just a whole list of standard features that come with a game designed for a PC. Meanwhile, if it's a PC port, you often get undesirable graphics because it's a 720p texture blown up to 1080p. In case you don't understand, it makes it look worse, not better. You have more pixels, but you haven't uh, created the texture to fill in those missing pixels. Everything's just more blurry. Um, what's even worse is uh, game designers, who have no idea what they're doing, will tie their frame rate the 30 FPS and make it directly tied to their physics engine, meaning that if they port it to PC, they literally cannot put 60 FPS into it because everything would run twice as fast. Um, and that's comical because they clearly do not know what they're doing. When they're doing. That is just like one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And they're often missing things like volume sliders, anti-aliasing, G-Sync, and other features that you basically need in order to make games look better on PC. So Microsoft wants to avoid the hassle of doing all of that, and they just basically want to slap on, well, this came from Xbox One. And I hate that idea. So I don't want to let them have that happen. Um, Xbox One has some exclusive games. So, so like three or four that you would actually play. Yeah, and so we actually looked up the exclusive Xbox One games, and it's just nothing in comparison to what PlayStation has. Um, they literally have a total of 26 games that you only can get on Xbox One. Now, I'm not talking about ones that later appear on PC or later appear on PC or PlayStation or on PC. I'm saying that they're only purchasable on Xbox One. Microsoft has only 26 titles, and of those 26, I could recognize two of them. Halo 5 and Forza Motorsport 5. Yep. 
I don't even play racing games. I just know that Forza Motorsport 5 is a game, and someone is probably interested in it. Yeah, people, people was, enjoy that. Yeah, like, I know what Halo is, because it's fucking Halo, but... Wasn't there also a Halo collection if you wanted to play... Yeah. From the old original, ones. yes. <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. But you can compare that to PlayStation. PlayStation has 100-plus titles that have already released, 100-plus more that are going to be released, and they include things like Bloodborne, Detroit Become Human, God of War, and the Uncharted franchise. So it's just silly because if you were wanting games to be available on PC... Um, you would want them to be from PlayStation. Mm-hmm. You'd want to play games like The Last of Us. Like, you would want to play games like God of War or Bloodborne. But instead, it's, it's, it's Microsoft telling you, we're too lazy to port them to our own operating system that we also make. I mean, it just baffles me. It really does. And I think it just comes down to their store is broken. No one uses it. I mean... When you list off where to buy games, no one goes, oh yeah, don't you know you can buy it from the Microsoft Store? No. Steam. GOG. Humble Bundle. Epic. Like, all of these things come long before fucking Microsoft Store. Yeah. So here they are, trying to pawn away Xbox One games on PC. Because they've just lost their way, they don't know what to do anymore. And it's just sad. <laughs> well, I mean, Bill Gates runs his charity, which I think is a much better use of his time. Honestly, let's keep Bill Gates out of this. Yeah. Because, man, you, you know he's, yeah, he's got nothing to do with this. Um, he's long given his castle to somebody else and has an entire committee of people working on solving the actual world problems. Yep. Yeah. Good job, Bill Gates. Go, Bill Gates. Microsoft, not so much lately. So, let's go on to our next part, where we basically play the game of Price is Right via some eBay listings. And I have a few for you today, and like my usual one per episode, but we're going to probably go through them a little bit faster. Uh, Today we're going to be looking at VGA-graded games, and this is literally where they've gone in and they've looked at the quality of the item in its box, typically it's sealed, and uh, given it a grade from 1 to 100. Okay. Um, so I couldn't find any that were 100. Um, I found a couple 95s with other newer games. Mm-hmm. So this one is going to be your classic uh, Pokemon Red. C. And it's VGA graded at 90. So it's a near mint mint. So we were trying to guess the value of this, knowing that it's 90 out of 100 in terms of quality. Yes. I could only find one that was 85. I couldn't find any others. So with the Uh understanding that it's extremely rare. Scroll up. And the auction is for a brand new factory sealed copy of Pokemon Red version for the Nintendo Game Boy. The game has been encapsulated in a tamper-proof archival display case by VGA. VGA has awarded this game a grade of 90 plus gold. PayPal only. Item ships in 48 hours. 30 day return policy. Buyer pays for return shipping. Okay. So what do you think? I mean, it's so popular, right? Like the game. It's a collector's just... item. It's so abundant. It's just like, how much more how money do you... How abundant, though? Because this is, like, sealed and graded. Well, what I'm saying is, like, the game's not rare. It's the quality. I don't know. Could, how, I, mean, I don't know the current pricing of like, what red version I'm just is. saying, like, I have red. Do you have red? Do you have your original Game Boy stuff? I have my original Game no. Boy stuff. Oh, I don't know what the fuck that is. Oh, I felt... This is weird. I have, I mean, I have my red, my blue, and my yellow. My, my, when I lived with my mother would be when I had Pokemon Red, and she would routine, routinely clean up my room and throw things away. Mm, yeah, so I, I feel like I'm more of a Pokemon fanboy now. Um, well, I mean, I would still have them if parents didn't Pokemon throw the Cle- shit away. Oh my god, you are the collector guy. I guess. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm a bug catcher. I'm, I'm gonna just throw a number out here. I'm gonna say $150. See, I was thinking like 185 uh, at least we're in the same ballpark. Yeah. Uh, 
Jeez. See, I thought it was going to get crazy. I really did. Uh, $5,000. $5, if, if you wanted a VGA graded yeah. at 85 that one's going to be about 3500 Oh, see, I figured it was going to be crazy because that, that game, it has such... Like it's it's this is the time for that. It has like the the peak appeal. It appeals to multiple generations. I feel like I should go get my games graded, <laughs> bro. You should. <laughs> we have to keep in mind this is still factory sealed. Here, well, uh, can you just look up the cost of a regular factory one? Factory sealed. Like yeah, just look at red version. Cost of no, not no, factory just, sealed. Just a normal red version. Just red version. Count on red. Probably not more than ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, ten bucks. Hello. See, and I, yeah, I was guessing like fifteen percent more. Yeah, than, yeah, yeah. Fifty percent more than that. Oh, but yeah. this is fa this is fancy. I, just, I figured it was going to be crazy, but I was like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much they're worth. All right. Now, now we know what the ballpark is. Yeah. So. God. Now, uh, a YouTuber's favorite Super game. Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Super no, Mario. Yeah. No, don't. <laughs> Anyways. Super Mario Brothers 2. Yes. Mario Madness. <laughs> VGA graded, but this one's an 85. Uh, so it's not... And this is on the Nintendo? This was... Uh, yes, this was on the original Nintendo. And it's it's sealed? It is factory sealed, as you can... Okay. So... I'm, All right. I'm going to say... Super Mario or Super Mario Brothers scroll Return up. with yes. the princess. We scroll up. Thank you. And Toadstool will save the day. <laughs> One of the most. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, one of the most epic games of all time. This classic is the White Seal Edit version in near mint plus condition, graded VGA 85 in beautiful condition. Own a piece of gaming history in all its splendor. Exact item as pictured. Ask questions as needed. <laughs> See, I feel like that blurb was way better than the last blurb. Well, you know, some people have writing talents, other people don't. Just start reading the blurbs. So, Super Mario Brothers 2, what do you... I don't know. I really don't. Because this is like, don't people hate this game? I'm going to say $1,250. Because I don't understand why it would be worth anywhere close to... Oh, yeah, like it's All right, just... I'll say eight hundred because I think people hate this game. Eight hundred nineteen dollars. There you go. Damn. Almost right on the money. And there are multiple on here. This was the lowest price at eighty five. So oh, that's fine. Still though, I'm I'm so baffled at why did you spend that much? Because you're not even gonna play it. I just gonna be... <laughs> so our third collector's yeah. man. I saved the best for last in terms of blurbs. Um, this is Super Mario Kart uh, for Super NES, and it is graded 90, so it's the same as... Okay, so uh, I have a rough idea. So, Pokemon. But Mario Kart. Hello, welcome to Rare Bucky's Video Game Collection Blowout. I'm selling my entire video game collection that has taken years to acquire. Everything you will see listed... Our originals and are either factory sealed or in mint new condition. If you are a collector and you just need a few games to play, you will not find better condition items on eBay. Condition of each game will be described fully. Would you like to continue? Oh god, not no, 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 not That's really. So loud. This one is really nice because it actually describes the VGA Gold uh, stuff more. Uh, the VGA Gold level consists of the grades 100, 95 plus, 95, 90 plus, 90, and 85 plus. Um, and when the uh, when an item's condition warrants classification within this level, the smallest flaws are judged and taken into account to de determine the exact grade received. The select few items which receive these grades are among the highest quality in existence. A very small percentage of items submitted to VGA receive a gold level grade. And that's what that he's, is signifying. He's, he's really excited yeah. that he's got a gold level. He knows how to sell something. An he knows flaws, how to copy and paste. <laughs> exactly. An item's flaws must be very minor, subtle, and can often be difficult to identify with the naked eye. A collector who is extremely condition sensitive should be satisfied with the condition of a gold level item in the vast majority of instances. Really milking it. 
And then he talks about how they are true museum pieces oh, encased in mm, tamper-proof acrylic cases. Give the mm, Smithsonian. Mm, and will be shipped in their original baggies as pictured, oh, which protect the cases mm. from scratches. Man, this guy's full of shit. So how much do you think this is? 25 grand. Really? I don't know, man. I'm going wild with it. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick with $2,000. Seven hundred and fifty. Right, you well. We are not historians. No, nope. we are terrible prices, right? Oh man, I, it's weird to think about. I guess that quality bump didn't mean as much. I guess Mario Kart isn't as nostalgic as Pokemon. I wasn't paying attention originally when I was looking at these, but I found the original Legend of Zelda for the Famicom that was graded. Oh yeah, honestly. And that one they wanted five thousand as well, but I didn't want to have the uh, Pokemon and this one at five thousand. I was gonna say it almost seems like um, the Pokemon one's the outlier because it's so fucking expensive. Well, and see, I would have not used that one if it wasn't for the grid one graded eighty five that was yeah in a same I can price see, here. I can see so. the original Zelda being expensive. I don't know. Anybody yeah, this gonna... this this isn't even the one that's on the NES. This was when it was on the Famicom disc right. system. Yeah, and I was like, it, it's got like a Japanese cover. Like I could see that like museum piece, sure. Um, the others, I think, yeah, that's just beautiful, crazy. That's like there's some. Um, there's some Yu-Gi-Oh cards that come with the Yu-Gi-Oh game for I don't remember which uh, Game it Boy. Was, it was the Game Boy Color. Yeah, um, and they're worth like an S nine amount of money. One of them is like that Exodia head that has like, yep. and it's the the foil on them are like prismatic almost, yep. like the Pokemon cards were. Um, and there's also the Dark Magician. Oh um, yeah. And then uh, there's a third shitty card, wasn't there? Um, I don't remember, but I was like, I I have uh, both those because I still have all my Game Boy shit, and I definitely have like an Exodia um, set from when I was playing Yu Gi Oh, bro. Because I'm that guy <laughs> to be like, I mean, if you're un- if you're unaware, you just automatically win. Like nothing else happens. Yeah. You get all five pieces, and you did just you ever get to play it? I don't remember. It's been so long. I if remember you when um, you need to say my grandpa had like, <laughs> special cards or whatever, whatever the fuck he says in the show. I I remember when I tried to get back into it. Um, this was probably like three years ago or almost something like that. Um, I had thought about like really doing it because I wanted to be that guy that like just fucking shouted at the top of his lungs. <laughs> Exodia, the Forbidden One! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and someone just have to be like, fuck you, you piece of shit. Man, it's like, yep. people got serious about those cards. I mean, anybody who plays in a card tournament, like, they're they're really there to win, so they really hate losing. And when you, like, win with an alternative win condition, that is, like, the biggest thorn in someone's side because they're like, how the fuck am I supposed to plan... For example, with Exodia, you just can't plan that guy drawing five cards. And even, especially with the decks that I was playing, even if you made me discard cards, it doesn't matter. I have more pieces of Exodia in my deck. Like, you just get to, like, stupid amounts of, it doesn't matter what you do, I have prepared the ultimate deck. How many Exodias could you put in your deck? Could you You, make a deck of all Exodias? Well, I think it's, you have a maximum number of each in your deck. You have a maximum number of pieces, and oh. I think it was like three um, for the Exodia pieces. No, Exodia was specifically like restricted, like in the ban list, where you can only have one of one well, of each piece per deck. Yeah, the ban list also changes during you know each tournament and stuff like that. But I just remember you get a bunch of cards that was like pot of greed stuff like that. Draw a bunch of cards, and you can draw multiple pieces of Exodia, if I or have stuff fish out other pieces. of that's yeah, like Sankin. Pot of Greed and other shit's like banned now, I'm pretty sure. I was I mean a lot of the stuff. Like you said, oh, yeah. ban ban list evolves. No. Um I mean I remember going to a tournament, not actually going, but like I was gonna be playing Magic the Gathering later on in the day. Yeah. And so I was watching the uh Yu Gi Oh people playing. There's some decks where they win first turn. It's stupid. Yes. Um there's like in Magic there's turn zero wins, so it's just like I'm gonna go off like in my hand right now. You die. You just you're done. And it's like, oh, that's unfair. And it's like, well, welcome to 
Welcome to Magic. Yeah, well, it's just like, welcome to playing trading card games on a competitive level. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know why the fuck we're talking about that. Because <laughs> we got there. Yep, we sure did. Um, I digress. I'd rather be playing the Yu Yu Hakusho card game instead. <laughs> Or it was a great card game. What, I, I, what, what is that chess yeah. game we've been playing? Oh, fucking dope! Auto, auto chess. Yeah, auto Jesus. chess. Yeah. It's <laughs> embarrassing. It's embarrassing because I didn't have but like uh, fifteen minutes on Dota like recorded, and I got it because someone from years and years ago gave us um, Dota. Yeah, and it was like played like a game and was just like, oh, this is garbage. I don't ever want to play this again. And now I have like five plus fucking hours on it, and it's literally just devoted to Dota Auto Chess. Yeah, I mean, like, I've only gotten to play one game, but I've been watching a lot of videos trying uh, to learn what all the best picks are. It is a fucking experience, man. Um, at at first, um, you're just constantly going to like second guess and be like, I thought I understood something, but I don't. And a lot of times, it's because there's no um, interface on the screen to tell you like. Hey, you have X amount of these people, therefore your ability's going off. Yeah. You have to fucking wait until combat's happening, click on a character, and be like, wait a minute, he's not getting the blah 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 buff for you to like scratch your head and like count all your characters and be like, why isn't he getting the buff? What, what do I need in order to make this happen? <laughs> And it's like, well, it's too late, you're dying. <laughs> you lose. And that's, that's basically how you deal with it. And you're forced to... It kind of reminds me of Magic, where you're just playing about creature types, because you're just forced to like memorize all these things, where it's like, oh, he's a human beast warrior. Oh, he's a, a Naga warrior. It's oh, like, he's a goblin warrior. Like, what, three or four warriors get an armor bonus, and then you have six of them, and you yeah. get a bigger armor bonus? Right, and then you need to keep track of, well, if I have two orcs, orcs give plus 200 max HP. So now I need to remember to not only get a warrior, but it also needs to be an orc. However, it has to be a different type of orc warrior. If it's the same orc warrior, they don't get the bonus. Which oh, is I confusing as fuck. And... You want to still get multiples of the same character because when you yeah. get three of them, they level up and become like a two star or three star, or blah blah blah. But all of the people you are playing with all share the, the same, same pool. pool. Yeah. So it's... someone else can look and be like, oh, I see you have a three star orc warrior. I wasn't going to do anything about orc warriors, but I'm now going to get orc warriors in order to prevent you from getting a four star, and now you're going to lose. Tee hee 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 hee. And it's like, oh, this game is fucking complicated. And it's all auto chess, and by that I just mean you have like 10 seconds to fucking decide. I think it's longer. But it feels like yeah, it's like thirty time. seconds. Yeah, but it, it's it's just like and you picking time. from your pack counts towards yeah. that time as well. So you, it's like I spend twenty seconds picking something. Yeah, you have to draft your characters, pick which characters you're going to swap out, and give them items all in thirty seconds. Um, and like in your head, you're just like, okay, well, I really need a naga. And you look at all the creatures, and you're like, well, none of them are naga. And you're like, okay, I have extra money. Do I pay money to then re-roll the entire thing to see if I get Naga? Or is there something else I can buy? I look down and I'm like, oh, I just need another warrior. Go see which ones are warriors. Oh, here's a warrior. Oh, but I already have him. So I'm not going to get that bonus. Oh, I ran out of time. I forgot to put my pieces. I haven't given them any items. And you're just like, oh, this game is hard. Like, you have to be on the ball. Like, 8 p.m. My... <laughs> Yeah. First two rounds when I was playing, I couldn't figure out how to pull, put pieces out, so I just like was losing from the start. I, I notoriously on the first round, almost without fail every time, and I don't know why. I just forget to summon the piece. Yep. So it's like I've picked him, I've drafted him, but you don't pull him out. I, there. I haven't put him out there, and so it goes eh, and then like the guys pop up and just attack me, and I'm like, oh, I've got to move him. <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> Uh, what's worse is when you pick pieces and you put too many on the board 
And so it just, it lets you keep them, but then when it starts, it just chunks random pieces back. <laughs> Dude, I feel like almost every single time it did that, it was pulling off, like, the best piece it could. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started looking, and I was like, oh, I have low DPS guys, even though they're getting the buffs. I should just switch them out for higher DPS people. And I would try to swap all these guys out real quickly, and I'd fuck up and have too many people... And it would always be like, oh, did you just put in, like, a 70 DPS guy? Chunk. <laughs> I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, Dota out of chest. Very fun, very addicting. They're having problems with their servers, and that is just, like, an instant turnoff. You go to join, and it just does this weird um, ever-evolving queue where it queues up 10 players, and if one person decides to leave, it automatically resets the queue all over again. Oh my so it, gosh. So, on your interface, you're not like having to like flash back to a lobby, but it instantly fills the slot, and, is this, and then it's like, okay, accept the game. And then before I can accept the game, someone else leaves, and it flips it again. And so I get into this weird situation where I'm like, I'm not going to accept the game until, like, five fucking seconds pass because it's just going to fucking cancel the game and then whirl out again. And so, like, I get to the five-second mark and I go to hit it, and it's like, nope, backs out of the queue. And I'm like, what is going on? Found out some of that, the servers are just down. Like, they have their own, I guess, dedicated servers. So if their servers are down, it just does that forever, and no one realizes it, and that's fucking hysterical. So there's like millions of people trying to play, and they're all just sitting there getting that. And I didn't realize it until I got fed up after like trying for 10 minutes, and I was like, I'm going to just watch someone stream. And they literally had on their thing playing Dota Auto Chess, and I go to their stream, and they're literally just shit-talking about the servers being down. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> like they're just down. Like it really needs to pop up and say our servers are down. Stop fucking queuing, or just not let you queue for it. But it just keeps letting everybody join in. There's even times where the game just will let you join in, but it doesn't start. Like you have the movement piece of your hero, mm -hmm. you can move around, but it never queues to drafting. And it's like, there's no connection there. It's bound all the people together, but the server isn't there to respond. And this is comical. But I don't care, I keep queuing. I keep queuing. I keep queuing. It'll come back up. Yeah. It'll eventually fix itself. Uh, they're in another country, I'm sure, by now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Dota Auto Chess, great game, very addicting. It's just as addicting as I thought it was, and I'm horrified about it. Um, and then I have people messaging me, uh, oh, so you're into Dota now? And I'm like, nope, just into auto chess. And they're like, what is that? And I'm like, you don't want to know. <laughs> just tell them, man. I'm just, be like, just like, the yeah. show. you don't want to know. This is, uh, this is the bad stuff. Uh, this is like dealing the heroin. Because <laughs> you just instantly re for a game. Like, as soon as you fuck up, there's 23 million fucking players or some shit fucking playing. No, that's the Apex number. I don't remember what it is. It's a lot. Yeah, it's millions of people that are playing. Like 5 million or something like yeah, that. Um, and I'm just like, God, like, there's no laps in between games. So, like, the other night I just kept playing, 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 playing. I was like, oh, it's fucking four in the morning. I've been playing Dota, Dota Auto Chess for five hours. Maybe I should stop. Good stuff, good stuff. The only reason I could do it is because someone gave me that game for free. I guess otherwise I would have had to buy it. No, uh, that was free. Yeah, oh, that was just free. free? Yeah, yeah, it was just at the time it was, open, it was beta. It was closed uh, beta. Like, okay. It was beta keys, I got. But yeah, cool, cool. Um, I guess we can move on to media recommendations. I was basically just shouting out about it. Auto chest. Yeah, I mean, we you kind of already play, got there. You could play some Dota Auto Chest if you were interested. Um, we also, uh, me and you discussed Oscars. Oh, yeah, earlier this week. Um, uh, best Picture Oscar was Green Book. 
Uh, me and you have both seen this. Yeah. It's um, an amazing movie. Yes. Um, this is like a weird genre, I feel like, for me. But I love movies that are about, like, the racial disparity um, between two people and, like, the social justice that eventually comes around. Um, I'm trying to remember, there was another movie, Hidden Figures. It was just about um, a black woman writing um, the literal mathematics for getting people to the moon, leaving the Earth. And she had to do it when there was segregation, there was white bathrooms and black bathrooms, and, like, even at fucking NASA, like, or whatever it was, university that they were working at, um, there was still that kind of segregation. And I just, I don't know, I get this, like, mean justice boner where it's just like yeah like they finally got what they're supposed to and the bad people you know fucking realize that they're a bunch of assholes and pricks and we as like a civilized society managed to turn that shit around right it all comes out as like a feel good story same thing with Green Book where man I just I really did not like uh, the main character Vigo who is an Italian guy I don't remember I'm trying to remember his name um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, Vigo's the actual I actor's name. Him. Yeah. Um, but he's an Italian guy, and he's kind of just like muscle for hire. Um, and he steals. And well, he's he, a bouncer for a, a, a club. Right, but, I mean, he immediately becomes Nick, muscle for hire. Nick Falioni. Oh, man, that last name. Yeah. Very Italian. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, wait, no, no, that is. Okay. But, yeah, um, he just, he, he plays like a prick in the beginning, and it takes about 45 minutes into the movie for him to become a desirable character, and um, it really just, like, flips everything on the head where a black guy is teaching the Italian guy how to be white, and the white Italian guy is teaching the black guy how to be black. Um, and it's it's just the weirdest thing where they manage to flip everything on the head and they both learn from each other. Um, that last moment at that concert is just adorable. Yeah. Where it all comes together in the end. They finally realize that it takes the two of them uh, to respect each other and their views um, to make a decision of that magnitude where they're both happy. And he gets home by Christmas. Like, it's such a lovely story. But uh, long story short, it's about a pianist touring... Don down Shirley. S- Don Shirley touring um, down south when there's obvious racial tensions in the south. And he hires this Italian guy in order to protect him so he can get from one venue to another. And man, does he just face a lot of difficulties. But you have a lot of fun along the way. Um, and it's just, it's a great feel-good movie. <clears throat> it's weird. Uh, the guy who plays Don Shirley, the pianist, is also in Battle Angel Alita. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. And so I watched that back-to-back, and I was like, wow, you played an incredibly different part in this movie compared to the other one. <laughs> um, he's a bad guy. Uh, yeah, he's a bad guy in the Battle Angel Alita. So it was just like, oh, this is very different. Um, Was he as good in that? No. Um, But that's okay. He doesn't need to be. It's a different type of movie. He was portraying, um, yeah, in a different type of movie, and he's portraying something that's very different. Um, But yeah, um, I can talk about Battle Angel Alita. Of course, um, Battle Angel Alita is a crazy weird movie. Um, I'm not gonna say it's great because I just keep watching it because it's weird. It's the <laughs> character. The character evolves so much over such a short time span. Um, I, it's just like imagine um, having a kid and just like all of a sudden they're 14 years old and now they're like a. 6,000 year old battle warrior android you're just like I blinked and I missed everything yeah um but like that's what occurs during this movie is that 
a scientist who literally puts people back together with cybernetic implants and enhancements, finds the severed head of um, Lita, and he puts it in a body, repairs her, she wakes up, and she basically, like, assumes, like, a 14-year-old's personality. And then, like, in the course of, like, 30 minutes, she turns into a woman, finds her original body, which is, like, a 6,000-year-old um, exoskeleton that's just purely meant for war and destruction and mayhem, puts it on, and then just goes to fucking town. And I'm like, this is such a crazy movie. I don't know what to think about it. Like, um, there's lots of awesome visual effects. There's lots of crazy CGI. Um, it's just so weird. Um, well, I mean, the it is plot, based on yeah, the manga. This, this the, sounds pretty weird. The plot line even involves what they refer to as Rollerball, which is just like if you've seen the movie Rollerball, it's where they're like oh, on roller so skates. Bad. But it's like in the future where everybody's androids, so they're going like, you know, 100 miles of an hour, and they're just all trying to like chop each other up because there's no blood, they're all robots. But it's for sport, and it's like a battle arena, and I'm just like, what is this movie? Like, we went from a scientist like trying to put someone back together, um, and he sort of sees his daughter in her. Um, and you know, then she turns into a war machine, and there's there's like a love story that happens in between. It is a loaded movie. I I can only fathom what is in the original content. Like there just has to be so much fucking story in the original content because it is unfathomable the amount of shit they try to shove in this movie. Where I'm just like, well, what is that about? What? And they're just well, like, have that. they're like, no, we've moved on. We've said 12 other things. Shut the fuck up and just follow with me. And I'm like, I'm rewatching it like the second or the third time. And I'm like, that almost seems like a story in its own right. And it probably is. It's probably like a good 30 fucking chapters in a manga. <laughs> it's just, man, that movie's loaded. Um, like I said, if you, if you just want to watch something for the visual effects, great movie. I just, it's hard to recommend it for the plot, because, hmm, so much shit happens. I'm just constantly left scratching my head, being like, what? Uh, you're, you're clearly trying to tell something that's really long, and you just don't have enough time to do it. I even, like, maybe, man, and I, I almost hate saying this, but maybe it was, it'd be better if it was like a two or a three part movie series because whew, her turning in to like a 14 year old could have been like part one part two could have been her finding like her fucking body and like wanting to get it and then being like no I'm not going to put the giant military cyborg weapon on you so you can go kill people and then the third part could be Oh, I, I see you went ahead and got the cyborg body and you're going around killing people. Because it's so much of a transition in such a short amount of time. Where you really just feel like they didn't have breathing room. It's more of a lurch. Yeah, like an actual transition. I'm just like, wow. I thought you were a child. Now you're murdering people. What happened 10 minutes, you know? Um, also, sh the... Battle Angel Lita looks nothing like the actress. Um, I looked her up afterwards, and I was like, it's amazing. Um, she doesn't look anything like her. I mean, she has dark hair. So I have so many questions about what they did, the CGI of that movie. Because it's, it's definitely not meant to look like the actress. It's meant to look like somebody else. So I'm like, did she, like play all those parts or did she just do voice acting it might just be 75 85 percent green screen with someone walking in pretending like they're her and then her just doing voice acting because there's almost no reason for her to be there um because her head is the only thing that I say it isn't CGI. It's obviously like got heavy CGI greased all out of it, but you know the rest of her is robot. Right. 
so that's all yeah. fake. And then it's like, you can't even tell her face looks like the actress. So it's like, you know, 75% of what was real has been digitally distorted to the point that you can't tell it's the actress. Did she have to be on set? <laughs> or was she just in a box doing voiceovers? Um, especially when you get to things about, like, them doing, um, you know, fight scenes, choreography, and stuff like that. 75% of her is a robot. I guess that might have all just been CGI. So I stress it's a great movie to look at for visual effects for CGI. Um, oh, man, I could just continue on tirades. This is just all about me. Um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse wins still Best Animated yeah. Feature Oscar. Still haven't seen it. This was such a huge deal because Disney hadn't lost... Best Animated Feature Oscar. And I want to say it was like 10 or 15 years. Like, it was something absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think Sony Pictures did this because they yeah, own Spider-Man. And you can look at the trailers and just see... I don't know what they did with their animation, but it's gorgeous. Like, they, they did something new. I don't know if it's software or a combination of effects. But you watch the movie and it's just like, I dig it. And it looks so good for a comic book quote-unquote based movie where that shading and graphic style really lends to the fact of hey you know it's based off of a comic book like you're not having to do comic book pains it can just you can look at it and be like oh feel yeah like it this feels like it's appropriate um it's not this weird sense of realism and it's not this weird sense of cartoony you can just look at it and be like yeah You've got the visual down. I'll oh, just run with it. And they do. And I don't want to talk about it anymore because I'm just going to spoil the shit out of all the characters. Yeah, but, it's not talking. Uh, see it. Watch it. It's good. There's different kinds of Spider-Mans. Oh, they're all amazing. It reminds me of there was a Batman movie in which they had different graphic artists work on um, within the same series. So they would do, like, individual episodes and be like, here's, like, an Asian crew working on it. Here's, like, a Brazilian crew working on it. And then, like, here's something that's more mainstream, like, Western. And it's like the different graphic styles were so crazy. And so each person was allowed to just run with their creativity and they'd give them, like, kind of unique abilities. So the Asian-oriented crew wanted to make him more like a ninja, like like they wanted him to be Batman in the shadows, you know. Um, meanwhile, the Brazilian crew was like, he's gonna fucking Muay Thai and punch people, like he's a trained fucking assassin. We want to see like hand-to-hand combat. And then the Western guys were like Batman with guns, <laughs> you know. And it's very ridiculous, different styles. But it's awesome to all see that within the same context of the movie. Um, that's what you get a little taste of in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, yeah. Is there any kind of media recommendations the two of y'all want to talk about? Uh, I mean, it hasn't been going on very long. I think it's only like 11 chapters, but I've been reading a manga called uh, Chainsaw Man. Uh, it's basically about a, a guy who uh, works as a, a demon slayer, but he's you know, not very strong or anything, and he's got this pet demon who he takes care of, and it's like a really low-level demon, and then he gets murdered, and the pet demon then possesses him to let him come back to life. And it enables him to actually, like, pull on the the ripcord of the demon, which was like a tiny chainsaw demon, and he, like, goes into this demonic form where he cuts things up. But, uh... Sounds like a dark anime. Yeah, I mean, he gets picked up by this uh, organization that's like a bigger uh, demon hunting organization. And so it's kind of like, hey, you're going to work for us, and if you stop working for us, we're going to execute you because you're a demon. (laughs) Nice little catch-22 there. And he just wants to uh, get with the person who recruited him, and so that's why he's going along with it. (laughs) It's not even a bad situation for him, because he just wants to, you know, get with this chick. Oh. Um, that sounds interesting. I can't remember if I've mentioned it or not, but the Umbrella Academy on Netflix is pretty entertaining. Oh yeah, I was gonna watch that. It's 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 pretty good. It's yeah. very fun. I was gonna see if you wanted to watch that, but I guess I, you already started. 
I mean, I'll watch it again. I remember you talking about it because I already asked the question if it had something to do with Resident Evil, and you no. said no, and then I don't remember what else you said. About yeah. It. <laughs> um, let's see. Also, Russian Doll was kind of cool. I was also going to probably watch I only, that. I only point. watched one episode, but it's pretty interesting. What I is, remember it's that chick from American Pie. What is Russian Doll? Uh, so, from the episode I saw, this, this woman's like caught in a loop to where she keeps dying. On the same, it's like Groundhog Day, but she dies every time, and then it restarts right back at the same. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like it's Edge like of Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, I just want to make sure I had the movie. Except right. not in the same like setting at all. This right. is just her experiencing a normal day of life and then dying repeatedly. It's like there's also a horror series that's like Happy Death Day that I've seen the commercial for. Um, it's a B-rated franchise where a person dies on their birthday so they're forced to relive that day over and over again the only re- way to like stop it from happening is to murder somebody else oh wow and now a sequel's coming out where whoever they murdered figured it out and now they're coming after them yeah um and do you know the name of that movie because it's amazing we were discussing it at work and i can't remember what the name is i, I think it's um happy death day yeah, but the name of the second movie. Oh, Happy Death Day 2? I don't know. Death Return. Oh, Happy Death Day to you. To you. Yeah. But yeah, um, I love ridiculous <laughs> things like they that. They should have done Happy Death Day No You. Remember in our Oscars discussion, we were discussing, or I had mentioned Trolls 2? Yes. It is actually a movie that is coming out in April on 420 of 2020, and the McElroy brothers will be in Trolls 2. Oh, and it's done They're by the original... They're you get really baked and go watch this movie. Yeah, probably. I mean... It's actually going to be called a... Trolls World Tour, not uh, oh, Trolls okay. 2, which is unfortunate, but... Yeah. I mean, they're... If you're a fan, there you go. It'll, it'll be a thing. Probably won't see it. Even, I don't... Even though the McCrory brothers got in it. Yeah. They, they do this podcast, it's like 20 minutes, and it's like eight episodes right now where they're trying to get in the show, and it's done documentary style, but it's... Them. Yeah, and they're, they're ridiculous <laughs> if you've ever watched any of their stuff. They're very animated people. Yeah. I'm probably going to pass on that. Um, I've been rewatching Warville lately. Um, oh, season, I need to watch season two. Yep, season two is out. Per usual, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, I like the episodes that are about Star Trek things. I hate the episodes that aren't about Star Trek things. Because I hate Discovery, because Discovery is garbage, so now I have to watch Orville in order to watch Star Trek. There's, um, there's like episodes about, like, oh, like, um, the person that you thought I was is actually, like, an alien in disguise. And it's like, this is some, like, B rated fucking shit. And then there's, like, weird ones that I enjoy where they're, like, throwing. And Star Trek series usually have like an android or a higher intelligence being or a hologram that's like unable to have the same human rights or whatever, and they'll breach breach the two relationships by having romantic affairs. Um, that's showcased in Data um, from the Enterprise series and the Doctor and the Voyager series, and so they're kind of parroting it here in the Orville by having a synthetic ro- robot life form from an alien planet try to fall in love with the doctor and so they play off the whole like what's it like to fall in love with a robot so there's still like clever star Trek type stuff happening on the Orville it just seems to be happening on like a less often basis like they almost seem to be doing in more fillers um there's like an episode where they comically talk about all the replacements they're going to get for their security chief. It's just like, I don't need to see like the Model C, Model D, and Model E replacement of like, hey, look at these fuck ups that we're going to send you. But it's a comedy show, and that's what they're kind of focused on. I just really appreciate it when um, he, Seth McFarlane just goes like full on. Uh, balls to the wall and just makes it about Star Wars instead of just being like I don't know art jokes and Star Trek Trek. references yeah it's all about Star Trek and 
shitty, stupid things that no one cares about. <laughs> Peter Griffin voice? Yeah, like, you can, you can kind of just be like, hey, you meant that for the Family Guy episode. Could you get that the fuck out of my Orville series? Thanks. But I mean, it's just two years. Yeah. Uh, there's an episode about one of the aliens growing a mustache. That's fun. That's actually really fun. It's just like... I mean, the idea of, hey, we have the technology in order to do this? Cool. The idea of, like, the aliens growing a mustache? You could have used that for so much better things. Like, well, I mean, but that, this show's not meant to be as serious as what they have. It. Well, no, no, no. I just mean, like, if that's going to be the comedy punchline, like, okay, but he can grow hair everywhere. So, um, you know... You could just, he could turn into a fucking Chewbacca, like, or he could just grow it somewhere else. He could misunderstand where the mustache is supposed to be. Like, just so many things. But yeah, I'm rooting for Orville to continue. And I hate Discovery. So, keep on with season two. Any more TV shows, books, or anything else? Um been thinking about uh, still looking into doing the audiobooks was going to do the Dresden Files um, oh so you decided on Dresden Files yes nice uh, you should definitely give them Ben Sanderson stuff at some point I hope, well I was like man I've got I got such a list uh, the other thing I was talking about was doing the Wheel of Time series after the Dresden Files he finished Wheel of Time out Ooh. I haven't because Robert Jordan died yeah I really... <laughs> well you know uh, yeah, that'll be a ridiculous book series. Yeah, I got like halfway long. through and never finished. I think I got to like Path of Daggers, and that was the last book. That's my deal with like a bunch of really good sci fi series like um, Ender's Game and Dune and stuff like that, where I like look at it and I'm like, oh, I got like 16 books, huh? Well, I'm gonna read the next one. And I'm like, oh, this isn't half as interesting as the one I read before it. And then I have to like sit there and contemplate. Can I just skip this one? And some of them you can, it's just some of them it's like, oh, who the fuck is this character in book five that I'm supposed to know about? (laughs) Go Google it. It's like, oh. I've been reading the uh, DC Heroes in Crisis comic. Issue six just came out. But uh, it's garbage. Mm. (laughs) I keep keep reading it, hoping that it would get any better and wanting to know who the murderer is because it's like a murder mystery yep. and that was revealed in this issue so and yeah. I mean the clues were pointing towards this, this person so and it's a and I guess B-list hero I don't know if either of you would know them yeah I don't know if you care about spoilers for a comic you're never going to read but no. it's, it's do you know who Booster Gold is I recognize oh, the I name that, only that because thing. I played DC Universe Online, and Booster Gold is like the guy who narrates the entire city. You go through Booster Gold missions, and he explains everything. He's like the low-level, entry-level hero in DC Universe Online. Yeah, yeah that's him. He's like a, a football star from the future who stole items that let him go to the past and are super given powers. And so he's just there to become a hero. Yes. But really, he's just wanting to get famous. I, I would say that's a B-list superhero character if I've ever heard yeah. of it. Yep. Um, the new X-Men movie is going to come out. They're going to do a terrible Dark Phoenix movie. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've been it's been so story. bad that the early screeners, people walked out. Wow. So that just brings me, like, ah. that brings me a huge amount of hope. Just to uh, see that shit fail. I mean, it's gonna be bad. There's no doubt yeah. it. I mean, they rebooted their universe just to fuck it up again. Isn't right? that amazing? That's what happens when you have bad writers. Yeah. Well, it's just, just so many things. Just the source material is good. So, Cap- yeah, that's true. They just don't do want to do the source material. Yeah. Captain Marvel comes out later this month. Oh as well. yeah, that's right. It comes out soonish. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I'm just, I really want to see how well it looks with, uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, them doing him as a younger, his younger oh, self, yeah. like, how well is that? Clarification, Captain Marvel's owned by DC? No, it's a, it's a Marvel movie. 
Oh, okay. What you're thinking of is you're thinking of Shazam, who was originally Captain Marvel. Okay, because I was like, I knew there was some confusing controversy about they had two characters that looked exactly alike in one of them. Well, no, um, Shazam, well, Cap, the original Captain Marvel was owned by a company called Fawcett, and they sued them because he, his, he, they claimed he was too similar to Superman. Oh, okay. In reality, it's like, oh, hey, you're getting, sw- like, he was getting tons of sales. Like, it was more, more popular than Superman at that point. So, yeah. But uh, in the lawsuit, they won the character. Okay. So now they own Shazam, who they very rarely call Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel is a Marvel character. character. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the Shazam movie, I don't know if, did that already come out? I remember the trailer. No, it's, no, it's not out yet. And it, Man, no, I don't thing. think that's going to be very good. I mean, it's going to be a comedy. It looks fun. It's it's going to be the um, it's going to be the Eddie Murphy one. I forget when he did a comedy superhero one. That yeah, I remember yeah. that. Oh, uh, Pluto Nash. Yeah. Except for I don't think that, that was, movie was bad. Uh, Eddie Murphy. That, no, oh, no, that was that was. There's a another. Movie. I'm not thinking of Pluto Nash. There's another uh, one. He has like Green Rock or some yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, I remember that movie. I don't. Eddie Murphy oh. Green's ro- Green Rock. Super yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's gonna work. It's gonna go through DuckDuckGo. Meteor Man. Me- Boom. Yeah. Yep. It's not Eddie Murphy, though, is it? Nope. You're thinking of Eddie... Robert Townsend. Oh, what? Eddie Griffin's in it. There's an Eddie in it. Yeah, I recognize the cover instantly. Yeah, fucking Pluto Nash. Bad movie. Though. Bad. I don't. I don't I know. Really remember that movie. Oh, Captain Marvel comes out on the eighth. So I don't know anything about Captain Marvel, so I don't know if I should care. What's going to transpire in Captain Marvel? It's basically taking Fighting place aliens in like in the eighties. Oh. No, nineties. Oh, nineties. Yeah, it's like ninety something, and uh, it has what a unique storyline that I've never heard of before. Well, uh, Fighting aliens. It's the Skrulls, which are a shapes um, shifting race of aliens, and uh, evidently it's going to have a lot of Nick Fury in it. So that's the reason I'm more excited oh, about the movie. You're, is... you're excited because uh, Samuel L. Jackson yeah. will be appearing as Nick Fury. Well, I mean, pretty cool. to scream, I'm tired of these motherfucking aliens on the goddamn planet. Yeah. But uh, I don't think one, fun. one of the original ways that they dealt with a lot of the squirrels is they actually turned them into cows. And then, so they later had uh, a superhero story where, like, Oh, these people ate uh, the scrawl cow meat and ended up getting powers because of it. I, I and they ended up being the scrawl kill crew. I have a feeling that's not going to uh, transpire. Yeah, to, uh, somehow. Yeah. Somehow all the best bits of comic books get left out. And it makes the it to the weird bits of comic books. Yeah. But yeah, I guess that's it for us for media recommendations. You've been watching the Retro Chronicle Gaming News. Thank you all and have a wonderful day. Have a good one. Yep, enjoy your night.